How to halt climate change. This is an issue that's not only difficult for everyone, but it's something that is a reality, though some deny it. We have to face the fact that our world today is different from what our grandparents experienced just a hundred years ago. Our world can come to a completely different situation in just a matter of a small amount of time. And the situation is changing very rapidly already. And that is that mainly because carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases are accumulating in our atmosphere and then therefore also in our water levels and other parts of our environment, but also that these are causing the climate to, be, to change and we've heard a lot about it. There are glaciers that are melting and we see examples of that. We hear about uh, extreme conditions, weather conditions, whether each or any of these are directly related to climate change is always a controversy which has never been settled. But we do know that of the 2,000 and some climate scientists in the world, 98% of them say that it is really happening and that human beings have some cause of it, if not all. And so as we look at the situation, as it exists today, we find that, uh, well, the rivers are showing some signs if they're either flooding or if there is a drought situation, and also that the oceans themselves are rising at a small rate right now, but if the shelving effect or the, the effect of the breaking off calving of, of large sections of the Antarctic as well as Arctic regions, that this could cause a tremendous rise in the ocean levels. And this is going to affect people in a very uh, severe way because so many of our, especially poor people, live in urban areas, vast urban areas that are very close to the ocean itself in virtually every continent and among all peoples. We are going to have effects. And these effects will be, in very rare cases, for the better, that is, you might be able to ship materials from Asia to America over, over the Arctic Ocean areas that were always considered the Northwest Passage, uh, the uh, great imagination of a people, explorers of just three or four hundred years ago, trying to find that secret way of getting from one part of the world to the other. That might be easier, but that's about the only great effect that we can see for the benefit of everyone. There are some that will be living in areas which can grow things that couldn't be grown before, but there are others living in parts of the world which they will have to cease growing what they like to right now. As far as animals go, well, some are more mobile. The birds can fly a little faster than uh, the land-based ones, and some of them are going to have a very hard time. We know that climate change can make a great difference for our grandchildren and those beyond. We do not notice it that much right now, even though we're seeing examples, and that is one of the reasons that fools the people. That's what makes this more difficult. That's what allows climate change deniers to say what they want to say. And this is really part of the problem that we face. We have prudence, which is a virtue, one of our four cardinal virtues. It, Prudence is something that we must always exercise. Now, if I'm wrong saying that climate change uh, is taking place and others will show in the future that we had been fooled in some little way or other, well, it's only my pride that's at stake, nothing much more. If the other side, which allows the present condition to continue and say, no, there is no climate change, therefore let's continue the status quo, if that side is wrong, then the very vitality of our planet is at stake. The differences are absolutely immense. Prudence tells us that we should side always for the betterment of everyone and that therefore there are times when we do not do what we would otherwise do. If someone says, I am a good driver and therefore I can drive at 80 where it should be 40, you'd say, well, many of the times it will work to your favor. You'll get there faster. But what if you don't? What if somebody gets in the way? Or somebody doesn't note your approach so rapidly? 
And so we know beforehand that this is something that could affect us all is by being imprudent at this time. We cannot deny what we've got. We've been talking about climate change and the great difficulty involved, but how do we halt it? That was what the whole point of this discussion is. Well, let's look at it from a more personal level, and then we'll try to from a social level. On a personal level, each of us, of course, have got to take care of what we've got. We do not litter. We take our materials and recycle them. We only use so much. We don't try to do too much. We never waste anything. These are examples of personal care that we are already involved in. Most people, others have got to be trained to do so with time. But the point is that can we do more to halt climate change? Since much of it is due to the energy we use, and that energy comes mostly from fossil fuel uh, directions, not totally, some of it is nuclear based and others is renewable, and we're certainly trying to bring renewables out faster. Individually, we can't do too much there except to cut back on our energy use. That is fossil fuel generated from coal, or oil, natural gas. We think, well, we'll go from coal to natural gas individually. We'll do that in our home, and that's not enough. Natural gas has its problems too. And some say that it does as much damage from the leakage of the processing of the natural gas, drilling, transporting, and processing, that there's enough of it being wasted that it equals because the methane has a greater power to it to be uh, greenhouse generating. It has a greater power than that of carbon dioxide that comes from the coal more than from the natural gas. So in the long run, natural gas is no better. And so what we're trying to do, that's all part of the economy that we as individuals should be moving away from more towards renewable energy. When our homes have solar, we try our wind generated uh, energy, we try to use that better. Still conserving, but using it better than what we do if we have a fossil fuel based economy. We dry our clothes outside, or we simply turn off lights that are not being used. And so we have our take the, to all those electronic devices, turn them off or not use them in the first place. Why all of them? So these are questions we individuals can ask. But we can do more. We've got to support the people who are telling us that this is a prudent thing to do. Support our Holy Father, the Pope. He's being attacked as being communist. What a ridiculous thing. But trying to, in, by these individuals, so situated that they want to always look at themselves as the containers and the protectors of the status quo. They attack him because he's saying excessive capitalism has hurt us. He says we have to realize that there can't be a world in which we have billionaires making and doing all that they want and at the same time we have destitute people who do not have the essentials of life. So what he's saying is something we should support. If we're Catholic people, we should, it would seem that we would support him all the more. Christian people must see him as a Christian leader and do the same. And many times even the atheistic people, or those who are Buddhist or Muslim or others, should support our moral leaders wherever they say things that would help save our wounded earth. Our earth is fragile. It's affected by what we do. And we individuals have to face that and teach our kids that it is something that is not just so resilient that we can do anything we want to the tough guy. Rather, it's more like a mother that's being hurt by individuals who are rambunctious and uncaring. We have to be people individually who are really concerned and respect our earth. So respect coming from an individual is the best way we can halt climate change. We are people who have to have control of the situation. God gave this to us to be used properly. Each individual has to think of each change they make in life. Are they making it in such a way that those who are weak can be supported? Are they making it in such a way that through their silence and their lack of democratic 
operation, yes, that means that citizens, we've got to vote in or out these different individuals. Are those individuals kowtowing, that is, facing themselves to be people who are only involved with what the rich people dictate to them to do? Or are they people who are for the people? We have to insist as individuals not only not to hurt our earth, but to not allow those who are to continue. The third part of our discussion of how to call it climate change relates to what we as a people can do. It is one thing to act uh, in a local fashion and think globally, but it's also important that we think and act globally more than what people have said in the past. But we as a people, especially with internet, we can work with others. We do all the time. We internet with people in other countries and parts of the world. We are working as a world, and therefore, we have a social dimension to what we're doing to halt climate change. And so one of the ways in which we can do this, of course, is to initiate and bring in renewable energy as fast as we can. Most people are not aware that the fossil fuel economy, coal, oil, gas, that these areas have far greater subsidies than do the renewable energy, like wind and solar. That we forget that they are not the, these renewables are not the favored ones as far as governments and large corporations go. It is only in recent years have people seen that, well, they can create as many or not more jobs. Therefore, we as a social dimension should be giving attention, more attention, to how we can do as a, as a people, move this to an economy. It was like the Manhattan Project back in the Second World War, that they had to get an atomic bomb fast, and they did, all within five years in the part of the United States and its allies. Well, we have to do the same with the allies of the world in bringing about renewable energy, which is, well, about 10 to 12, 12 to 15, and in some countries 25% of the economy. But we move it on to, towards the 100% mark rapidly and do so, and we could do it all with willingness in a matter of 5 to 10 years. So there is no need for vast trans transition periods for fossil fuel. We can move fast. And this is the first thing. The second is, well, we have to do this trusting in God. People say, well, what's that got to do with economies? It has a lot to do with it. It's our willingness to make a change that is possible. But we can't do everything ourselves. We, working individually, we find out that even that is hard enough, but when we work with other people, small numbers, and then larger and larger, there's all kinds of conflicts. And that's why we bring God into the picture. God has to help us. God has to be there. God is our only safe solution to this. And so therefore, as religious people, we make an inference that it's not going to be done in a secular way alone. We have to work with God's help. And the more and faster we see this, the faster the transition can occur. The third thing is that we have a terrible violence in our society already. The transition's not going to be as violent if we can be nonviolent in our approaches. It is the violence of having billionaires and destitute in a world at the same time. We have to, as a body of people, see that the commons were meant for all of us. They were not meant for a few who took what the poor people of a previous generations had done and in an unjust way, the unjust deserts they use this to create their fortunes. The internet was created with, with uh, governmental, uh, not only assistance, it was done governmentally. And it was at the taxpayer expense, all the people. Therefore, the benefits of it shouldn't come to a few, it should come to all. And so as we began to see that, well, we renew our economy as fast as possible, then as citizens working together, in political ways, we can have a fairer tax system where those who are wealthy will pay in the FDR approach during the Second World War, 90 plus percent of their profits should go back to the infrastructure and to the people 
who need the essentials of life. We have to begin to have people who do not give favoritism to those who are wealthy, but instead bring down their nobility and therefore save their souls. Make them people who are poor enough to enter the kingdom of heaven. And therefore we have a job to do. And that is one of the important things to see. That wealth should not, excessive wealth on the part of a few is so utterly un undemocratic that we as democratic people have got to take the effort to make change. We are called to be people who halt and, and to bring about the climate change halt in a way that is more than just what individuals can do. We work together in a society. It can be done. With God's help, it will be done. Okay, at the end, let's say we've got to make some changes to halt the climate change that is occurring. We can do that as individuals. We can do it as a group. We should not get angry about this, but we have to be serious. And being serious means we have to work together with others, swallowing sometimes our own pride, working with others in a very special way. And we also want to say that we thank everybody. Thank uh, Mark Spencer, who is actually doing the filming of this, and Janet Powell, who is helping us uh, in our internet work. We'd like, like to thank, uh, to thank uh, Joe and Sydney Coors, whose cabin we are using here for this site. I'd like to thank all the people who help us in some ways. Those who donate to our cause, those who are receptive, those who support us in any fashion on earthhealing.info. Please read the book, Healing Earth. Much of what has been said here is found in that book. It's free of charge, digitally can be found at Braska Books or on our uh, on our own internet site. Uh, please download it, read it, reflect upon it. We need to change our earth and we need to change it fast. It's a revolution before us. Let's be people who take part of it uh, with a good heart.